friends, welcome back and welcome if you're new here. It is Meal Prep Monday, and boy, do I have some fantastic recipes for you. My breakfast, delicious. My lunch, delicious, and my snack, amazing. So everything was so incredibly delicious. I can't wait to share all of the recipes with you. So if you wanna see what I made for meal prep for the week for breakfast, lunch, and a snack, just stay tuned. For my breakfast this week, I'm gonna be making a banana chocolate chip pancake bake. I cannot wait for this, it sounds amazing. I've been craving chocolate chip pancakes, so this is my WW friendly version of that. And this is going to be a cake or sheet pan pancake bake, so even better. Let me show you what's in our breakfast. So first you're going to need any type of flour. You can use white flour, whole wheat flour, whatever you have on hand. Unsweetened applesauce. Almond milk, you can do plain or vanilla. Brown sugar substitute, I'm gonna be using Sucrin Gold. I do purchase this on Nettrition's website. The link to their website is down in the description box. They have hundreds of WW friendly products. Best price on this Sucrin Gold, hands down, is on Nettrition. I also am gonna be using baking powder, vanilla extract, cinnamon, salt, eggs, Bananas, you want really ripe bananas, so it called for two medium. I'm gonna do three really small bananas in mine. And then lastly, you're going to need some chocolate chips, so I'm gonna be doing lilies. So let's get started on our breakfast. So let's put together our pancake bake. So first I'm going to add my one and a half cups of flour. Now you could substitute a baking mix, Kodiak, Bisquick, whatever you have, even a pancake mix if you'd like, but I'm gonna make my mix from scratch. So I have my one and a half cups of flour. I have two tablespoons of my Sucrin Gold. I'm going to add one tablespoon of baking powder. And then I'm going to add the equivalent of about a teaspoon of salt. And I'm not gonna measure it, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball enough salt to make about a teaspoon and then same with my cinnamon here i want about a half of a teaspoon now i love cinnamon so i'm gonna go pretty heavy on it um, i really like the flavor of it in baked goods so we're gonna give this a mix most importantly we want to make sure that our baking powder and salt and everything is equally mixed together in our dry ingredients and then we'll put together the rest of our wet ingredients. Next, I'm going to take my bananas and I'm just going to use a paper plate here and a fork and I'm just going to mash my bananas until they are fully mashed up and there's no more large pieces. Now, my bananas are not as ripe as I would have liked. I did try to pick the ripest ones at the store as you saw in my grocery haul, but they just didn't have a ton of really, really ripe ones, so they've only been sitting out for about a day. So I'd say the riper, the better for this. If you can even get bananas riper than the ones that I have here. So I'm just gonna get these all smashed up and then we'll put together the rest of the ingredients of our bake. wet ingredients into our dry ingredients. So first I have my mashed bananas. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all of those. They, it smells so good, you guys, yum. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon of my vanilla extract. You know I typically don't measure. Just going to eyeball a teaspoon. And I'm gonna give this just a little bit of a quick stir just to kind of get those bananas melded in with our dry ingredients. And then we are going to add one egg. And I have two tablespoons of unsweetened applesauce, which is my substitution for the oil in the recipe. And then lastly, I have one cup of unsweetened almond milk. And we're gonna give this a good stir get everything nice and combined. And lastly, we're gonna fold in our chocolate chips. And the last step is our chocolate chips. So I went ahead and measured out three servings of the Lily's chocolate chips. 
it's easier to measure than to count out 180 chocolate chips. So I just measured them on my food scale and I'm just going to gently fold them into my batter. And then we are ready to get this into our pan and into the oven. I will tell you, it smells super delicious. And look at all those chocolate chips. So I've went ahead and greased my pan. You want about a nine by nine pan. I think this is a six by 11 or something. You just want a smaller pan. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our mix. I did spray some nonstick cooking spray in my pan. And we're gonna add all of our delicious banana chocolate chip pancake mix. I am, I'm seriously so excited for this. I've been craving chocolate chip pancakes and I thought why not add the sweetness of banana in with that. It just sounded so good. So there is our mix, and I'm going to just drop a couple of chocolate chips on top, not enough to add up to any points, just to give it that little bit of a look, more of the chocolate chips on top. I added a few chocolate chips, and we're ready to go into the oven. We're gonna put this in at 350 for 18 to 20 minutes, depending on your oven, or until you can insert a toothpick and it comes out clean. Chocolate chip banana pancake bake out of the oven. I'm gonna let this cool for just a couple of minutes. We're going to cut this into six servings. I'm going to pair this with some strawberries and some Jimmy Dean sausage links, turkey sausage links. I'm gonna put this together in my meal prep container and I'll be back to show you my completed breakfast and give you the smart points. Before I put these into the meal prep containers, you guys look at this. Chocolate, it's so thick and fluffy. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. So here is my completed breakfast for the week. I literally cannot wait to have this. So let me show you exactly what I'm going to be having. So I have one sixth of my banana chocolate chip pancake bake. One sixth is five smart points, so not bad at all. In my little container here, my little reusable container, I have a couple of tablespoons of this sugar-free syrup. You guys, this is the best. I'm serious, look how thick this is. The best, most authentic tasting sugar-free maple syrup I've ever had. I bought this on Nettrition's website. Again, there's a link down in the description that'll take you directly to Nettrition. Nettrition. It's gluten-free. It has natural maple flavor, so it tastes amazing. I literally am so excited I found this. This is my new go-to sugar-free syrup. You can have a quarter of a cup for one smart point, but what I did is I just went ahead and put just a couple of tablespoons in my little container so it is zero smart points. Uh, definitely order this, you guys, from Nutrition. It's amazing. And then I have some fresh strawberries that I just cut in half, and I have two links of the Jimmy Dean turkey sausage. So these are one smart point a piece, so that is two smart points. So that makes my entire breakfast seven smart points. That's it, seven points for this entire breakfast. I am so excited to have this. For my lunches this week, I'm gonna be making mini burgers. And these aren't your traditional mini burgers. We're actually not using a bun, and we are using puffed pastry instead. I am so excited for this. I've been craving a juicy burger, and this is going to satisfy my craving, and it is well within my points. So let me show you what is in our burgers. So first, you're going to need some extra lean ground beef. I'm gonna, of course, be using 96.4, and this is from Trader Joe's. I love this ground beef. We'll also need some sugar-free ketchup. I have the G Hughes, Dijon mustard, salt and pepper. And again, we are using puffed pastry instead of hamburger buns. So a little twist on your traditional burger. You'll also need an egg. And lastly, whatever cheese you wanna use, I'm gonna be doing this Trader Joe's light shredded Mexican blend. So let's get started on our mini burgers. So to get started on our burgers, I've added my one pound of extra lean ground beef to my bowl. To that, I'm going to be adding in four teaspoons of Dijon mustard. You can also use just yellow mustard if you don't have Dijon on hand. I love Dijon mustard, so I'm definitely in for that. I'm also going to add four teaspoons of my G Hughes sugar-free ketchup. And again, you can use any sugar-free ketchup. You can also use regular ketchup. You just would need to recalculate my points. And also some salt. And you want a decent amount of salt to kind of bring out the flavor in your burgers. 
and also some black pepper. And then we're gonna give this a stir, get all of this nice and mixed together. And then we're going to pop our burgers into a fry pan and get them cooking. So let's get this stirred together and we'll form our burger patties. So I've sprayed my pan here with some non-stick cooking spray and I'm just going to form my burger, it looks really good with the ketchup and mustard, into six patties and put those patties here in the pan and we'll be ready to cook those down. We're gonna cook our burgers for about one to two minutes each side. We wanna get them slightly browned on the inside, but get that nice browning on the outside. They are going to cook some additional time once we add them to our puffed pastry. I'm gonna get our puffed pastry ready to go. I'm actually only going to be using half of this sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half. Now, if you do wanna use the whole sheet, just recalculate your points. This is where a lot of your points are coming in. So I decided that one half would probably be plenty. So I'm going to cut this one half into six strips. So I'm gonna go in half, and then I'm also going to cut each half into three strips. So we'll do that. And then we're also going to cut all three strips diagonally. So let me show you what that's going to look like. So go ahead and take one of your six strips. Let's turn here. And we're going to cut that diagonally like this so that we can wrap that around our burger. So we're gonna kind of create a shell around our burger. So there, we're gonna cut all six of our strips in half diagonally. So let's get these burgers put together. So each burger is going to have two strips of the puffed pastry. Here are my burgers. They are not cooked all the way through, but they are cooked enough that I can keep their shape when I go to transfer them to the puffed pastry. So we are going to put them directly onto one half of the puffed pastry. I did measure out three ounces of the light shredded Mexican cheese. I don't even know that I'll need all three ounces to be honest, but I am going to put just a little bit of cheese on top. And then we are going to take this and we're going to pull it up over. So that's one half of our strip. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other strip. We are going to pick this up place it onto the other strip and pull. And we're going to just kind of pinch the puffed pastry closed around our burger patty. And then once we get them all assembled, we will brush the top with some egg mixture and get this ready to go into the oven. So I wanna show you, this is the burger I showed you. I changed up my routine. You can see here that I actually laid the puffed pastry over the burger and it kind of hugged the hamburger patty and kept the cheese on top. And I also wanted to let you know that I did only use about half of the cheese, so one and a half ounces, which is great because that actually lowers my burgers by one smart point. So no one's gonna complain about that. So I, lastly, before these go into the oven, is I have a couple of eggs here that I did beat together with just a little bit of water. And I'm going to take my pastry brush and I'm just going to brush the top of the pastry shell. And this is another reason that I am glad that I discovered putting the pastry crosswise across the burger, only because it definitely helps with the pastry, the puffed pastry, to bind to the burger, but also gives me an area where to br I can brush the egg mixture. That makes it nice and brown and delicious looking when it comes out of the oven. So I'm gonna make sure that I get all of my burgers, pastry, brushed with a little bit of my egg mixture. And then this is going to go in the oven at 400. And we're just gonna keep it in there as long as it takes to cook down the pastry, get it nice and rise, let it rise, get it nice and brown, and then we're gonna go ahead and pull out our burgers, and our burgers should also be cooked through at that point as well. So here they are prior to going in the oven, and I'll be back to show you our completed burgers. We'll package up my lunch, and I'll show you exactly what I'm having and give you all the smart points. Burgers are out of the oven. These look amazing. So that's the first one that I did. It actually turned out okay, but I definitely like how the puffed pastry 
rows and how it looks better when you wrap it over the top of the burger. So I'm going to give these just a couple of minutes to cool. I'll get these into my meal prep container and then I'll show you exactly what I'm having and we'll go over the points. So here are my lunches for the week. You guys cannot wait for lunch. So let me show you exactly what I'm having. So I have one of my mini burgers. Now there is ketchup and mustard in there. Feel free to pair this with any type of sauce that you like. I may put a little bit of honey mustard on it, or I may just dip it in some additional sugar-free ketchup. But one of these mini burgers is five smart points. So not bad. You're getting the effect of a juicy burger, but it's only five smart points. So cannot wait. And then what I have here is some Brussels sprouts. And the Brussels sprouts that I'm using are these Trader Joe's. These are amazing. They're 99 cents a bag and they're in the frozen section at Trader Joe's. So for all five days, it ends up being a little bit over one bag of the Brussels sprouts. And then I'm going to have some watermelon. I left it in the bowl so that I can just bag it up in the morning. And then that way it doesn't get all liquidy and discolor in the Ziploc bag. So I'll have a serving of watermelon. And then for dessert, I'm going to be having one of these Choco Right Milk Chocolate Pecan Clusters. You guys, these are so good. I order mine off of the Protein Wise website. I've gotten a lot of questions about these. Yes, you can buy these in some grocery stores, but there's a big difference between those and these. These are one smart point per patty or two smart points per pack. So this is the pack. And in here, there are two of the pecan clusters. You can have this whole pack for two smart points or one of these in the package for one smart point. They do sell other Chocolite products peanut butter cups, these pecan clusters that are 100 or 130 calories a pack. That's going to put you at the three to four points per package. So you have to make sure you get the ones that say only 35 calories per piece. I have never seen these in the grocery store. The only place I've ever seen these is proteinwise.com. There is a link down in the description box. If you click it, it gives you $10 off. You can go on the website, buy all sorts of goodies and get $10 worth of free product, which by the way, is about a, almost two boxes of these Choco Right products. And there are six bars per package. So I'm going to have one of these for two smart points. If you have any questions, you guys, please leave it in the comments below. I'm happy to help. So two points for my dessert, five points, for my burger, everything else is zero. So this is my seven smart point lunch and I cannot wait to have this. Can't wait for my juicy burger I've been craving. For a snack this week, I'm gonna be making cinnamon streusel apple muffins. I cannot wait for these. I have been craving all things fall and cinnamon, my friends, is definitely fall. But I'm going to add some apples to get them extra moist. And again, apples to me screams fall. So let me show you what is in our muffins. So first you'll need a package of the Pillsbury sugar-free quick bread and muffin mix. This is the Deluxe Cinnamon Swirl. It's so good, I love it. And to make the mix, we're gonna use applesauce in place of the oil. You'll need three quarters of a cup of water and two large eggs. And then we are going to peel and dice two apples. These are just gala apples. You can use whatever ones you prefer. And we're gonna mix this in with the muffin mix. So let's get started on our muffins. The first thing we're gonna do for our muffins is I'm going to peel these apples and then I'm going to dice them fairly small and pop them in a bowl here. And then we'll assemble our muffin mix and put in our apples. All right, we're ready to get together our muffins. So I went ahead and removed the muffin mix package. In the box, there's also the cinnamon streusel. We're gonna be using this later. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the actual muffin mix into our bowl. And then we're going to prepare that by adding three quarters of a cup of water and two cracked eggs. 
and one third cup of applesauce. And all of that is what the package direction calls for. Just remember we subbed the applesauce for the oil in the package direction. So we're gonna mix this all together until everything is nice and combined. And then we'll fold in our sliced apples. Go ahead and add your two slice or however many sliced you want. You really could put more apples in or less, whatever you prefer. I felt like two good sized apples was plenty and it looks like it's gonna give a big chunk of apple in every bite of the muffin. So we're gonna mix that together and then we're ready to scoop this into our prepared muffin pan. So I'm gonna be using my brownie pan for my muffins. It just makes them square like little mini loaves of bread. I do have this linked down in my Amazon store. Also my medium size scoop, also linked in my Amazon store. You get all three sizes for like $10. So generally I use my large scoop, but because I'm going to make a layered muffin, I'm gonna start with my medium sized scoop. And then I have my muffin mix. So I'm going to take my medium scoop and I'm going to put a scoop worth of my muffin mix in the bottom of each muffin compartment. And then we're gonna put our cinnamon streusel mix in between our two muffins. So we're gonna add a layer of that before we finish with our muffin mix. So that's why I'm only filling these just barely full with just that little bit on the very bottom. So let's get these filled halfway and we'll add our cinnamon streusel and add the other half of our muffin mix directly to the top. Once you filled them about half full with the muffin mix, I went ahead and emptied the cinnamon streusel into a bowl. And I'm just going to take a spoon and put a little bit of the streusel on top of the muffin mix in each of the little muffin tins. And that's going to give it that nice cinnamony layer in between. And then we will make sure that we put just a tiny bit of the cinnamon streusel mix on top as well. Oh, you guys, it is so good. It does not taste sugar-free at all. I can assure you of that. I mean, it is delicious. So I'm gonna finish adding my cinnamon mixture to all of my little muffins here. And then we'll finish off the rest of our batter top it with a little extra cinnamon swirl mix, and we'll get these guys into the oven. Now to finish them off, I'm going to use whatever batter I have remaining and just pop it on top of the cinnamon streusel. So we're not gonna use a full scoop for the top only because we want that cinnamon to come through, plus we don't have enough batter to do a full scoop. So just about a half of a scoop on top of each of the little bit of cinnamon swirl mix, and we're ready to get these into the oven. So there are our muffins with a little bit more muffin mix on top. And then last, but certainly not least, we're going to just finish them off with a little more of the cinnamon streusel. Go ahead and use all the rest of it. Just try to divide it up as evenly as you can over your muffins. And I'm telling you guys, this is honestly one of the best parts of these muffins. This streusel mix is so good. So I'm gonna get these filled and we're gonna put these in the oven at 350 just until you can insert a toothpick and it comes out clean, probably between 10 and 12 minutes. That is going, of course, to depend upon your oven. So I'm gonna get these in the oven and I'll be back to show you our completed muffins. Look at our muffins, you guys. These look decadent and delicious. Look at that delicious cinnamon crumble on top. I'm gonna allow these to cool, plate these up, and I'll be back to show you what they look like and give you the smart points. So here are our cinnamon swirl apple muffins. You guys, I'm so excited. Look at that cinnamony goodness in there. Oh my gosh, incredible. You can have one of these muffins, and these are good size. They're literally mini loaves for only three smart points. So cinnamon, apple, fall is here, muffins for three smart points. Here are my snacks for the week. So of course I'm having a built Bar. As you know, this is my morning snack every single day. It keeps me full, satisfies my sweet tooth, and sustains me between breakfast and lunch. So this week I'm gonna be bringing the mocha chocolate cream. I love this. If you like coffee and chocolate, you will love this. The black cherry chocolate. This is one of my all time favorites. It literally tastes like a chocolate covered cherry. Double chocolate mousse. This one is really good. Chocolate on chocolate. So if you're a chocolate lover, you're gonna love that. I'm obsessed with the cinnamon chocolate cream. Unfortunately, it's no longer available. Come on, Bilt Bar, bring it back. 
Same with the blueberry cheesecake. Again, either one of these are not available anymore, but we are begging Built Bar, if you're listening, bring these flavors back, people love them. So I'm gonna be bringing a Built Bar, three smart points a piece. Here is your stats on these bars, 110 calories, 15 protein, six fiber, four sugar, four fat, three smart points. Best protein bar on the market, hands down. My code is here on the screen. It will save you 10% off and give you free shipping. And the best news, you can use it over and over again. So write it down, save it. When you need to restock your Built Bars, you have 10% off every time. So I'm gonna be bringing Built Bar for three smart points for my morning snack. I'm also going to bring some yogurts. I have been really liking the Light and Fit Greek Pumpkin Pie. I really like the caramel apple as well. You know what I was hoping? They would have some sort of a holiday flavor like peppermint cream or white chocolate peppermint or something like that, but I do love the pumpkin pie. I do sprinkle a little bit of Dax pumpkin pie spice on top of it, so good. So that is a two smart point snack. And also I like to have a protein shake on hand as a Another source of easy portable protein. And as you know, I am not the largest fan of the Premier. I completely dislike the ingredients. It's very artificial, very chemical, and Iconic is much different. This is a grass-fed protein drink. This particular one is Cafe Latte, so yes, it does have caffeine, but it does also have 20 grams of protein, three sugar, and 130 calories, and is also two smart points. Much better in taste, in my opinion, and much better in ingredients, like actually not full of a bunch of chemical ingredients. So take a look at that. I mean, you're talking whole ingredients in here, which is much, much different than what you're getting in Premier. Plus, it is flavored with monk fruit, or I'm sorry, sweetened with monk fruit, which is one of the best sweetener alternatives. So I love the Iconic Protein Shakes. I think they're delicious. I actually love all the flavors, the chocolate, the vanilla. There's a matcha. I mean, every one is delicious, and they're only two smart points. So I'm gonna be having this. I always have one with me uh, as an emergency. It's gonna get me some protein and keep me full. A little bit of caffeine, tastes delicious. My code is here on the screen for Iconic. You can get 15 percent off using my code. So it is about the same price as Premier and again, a million times better ingredients. So let me know in the comments if you guys try the Iconic using my code because you won't be sorry, it's delicious. So Iconic Protein, non-fat Greek pumpkin pie yogurt and Built Bar is going to be my snacks for the week. Thank you for joining me on this week's meal prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the recipes that I shared with you. They were all, again, incredibly delicious. Great meal preps would be great to serve to the family. And those cinnamon swirl muffins were like cake for three smart points. Crazy. So thank you so much for watching. If you are new to my channel, I'd like to extend a huge warm welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'd love it if you would take a moment and subscribe. Hit the little subscribe button and the bell. That way you're notified whenever I upload a new video. I do upload meal prep every Monday, which is called Meal Prep Monday. So make sure you hit the bell so that you don't miss a single one. Thumbs up this one and comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of this meal prep. What recipe or recipes do you have to try? And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye.